This is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right. So maybe I'll pick on pharmacy. So I'll, I'll talk about what I'm going to do and then get any off-the-cuff uh, ideas from you guys about it. So I was going to talk about a drug that's uh, newer. I think it came out actually more than 10 years ago, um, but it's probably been in use for maybe 12 years. Um, but it's called Dalvans or uh, Dalbavancin. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it or have used it at all. Um, it is an expensive antibiotic, but what's nice about with some of these newer novel drugs is we're actually seeing maybe some different utility or could actually change the way we practice things. So beyond, I mean, we're always running into drug resistance or those kind of things. Um, what's nice with this one though, is it's a single use antibiotic and it goes in for skin and soft tissue infections, basically can replace vancomycin for a lot of things, targets especially MRSA well, and uh, you know, possibly strep as you know, well. Um, but uh, it's a you know, one antibiotic dose goes in for about 30 minutes, it's 1500 milligrams, and then lasts for about two weeks in most patients. So um, you could imagine scenarios where somebody, I've got one right now, who uh, you know, might need to be hospitalized just for a concern of compliance or some other kind of mitigating factors, maybe failed out patient antibiotics, and need kind of the IV antibiotics in the hospital treatment. So there's you know, potential you know, with, with a drug like this where you could maybe stave off some admissions or the other things. Um, cost to a hospital on this medicine is under $2,000. So it's a, lot, it's a hefty dose. I'm sure the markup is there, but if you imagine keeping somebody out of the hospital for a few days, you know, that, that cost could be mitigated. Um, you know, so it's probably most closely related to vancomycin the way it is. So I, I imagine there's some cross reactivity there. Somebody's got a vanc allergy, we'd probably still need to avoid this. Um, it's not FDA approved for sepsis or those kind of things. Um, it's really geared towards kind of the more uncomplicated skin infections, but that do need IV antibiotics. And most of the criteria they recommend is something kind of bigger than a hand you know, print, um, but then less than 9% TBSA. So like an entire limb, if it's more than that, probably worth pursuing other drugs. If they're septic, you should look at other drugs because it's not really uh, teased out very well for that. Um, it doesn't really interact with a lot of drugs, which is nice. Um, so th I, I think there's some, some potential for it. Most of the studies have shown non-inferiority to like linazolid or vancomycin. So I think we have some potential there, but uh, as you can imagine, it's a proprietary drug. And so of course there's a lot of push from the industry that makes it and, and says, this is of course the best thing. So I think like a lot of drugs, there might be a little bit of a learning period in time. Rachel, I don't know if you guys have had any experience with this drug or uh, you, <laughs> there we go. All right. <laughs> I don't think it's on our formula, no. Yeah. I imagine if it came, it'd probably be one like ID would have to sign off for doses and, and those kind of things, just because you don't want it to become a routine thing where people are getting such an expensive medicine, but for the one where it might stave off an admission or there's other some you know compelling reasons, you know, there, I think there's potential for that. And uh, I was actually speaking to Dr. Hammer, one of the infectious disease doctors at Rose, um, kind of about it recently. So anyways, it's something that may be coming down the future. There's another drug that's very similar um, it just takes, I think, three hours to go in, and the cost is not that much different from what I saw. So, um, in any case, yeah, there, there's potential for some uh, practice changing medicine, or maybe it's just all a big bust. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.